Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, this one a red-green ramp deck featuring Luka, Coppercoat Outcast, the new Planeswalker from Ikoria, and we're mostly interested in the minus two ability in this deck, which lets us exile target creature we control and then reveal cards from the top of our library until we reveal a creature card with a higher converted mana cost, put that card on the battlefield and the rest goes on the bottom in a random order. And we've built our deck with all these two drops, but then we don't have anything until we hit our end race forerunners. So if we minus two on one of our two mana mana creatures, we're guaranteed to hit end race forerunners as a nice eight mana, seven, seven with vigilance, trample and haste. And when the forerunners enters the battlefield, other creatures we control also get plus two, plus two, vigilance and trample until end of turn. And the vigilant forerunners also does a good job of protecting our planeswalker. So we can often minus two on the following turn once again and get a second copy of end race forerunners, which is usually enough to win the game on the spot. Now of course we're not guaranteed to draw into our Luka Planeswalker, but we also have a pretty good backup plan, which is Nissa, who shakes the world, which is also quite powerful when ramped into ahead of schedule, can just generate a nice supply of 3-3 Vigilant lands, and with the mana doubling of forests, we can also easily hardcast our end race forerunners, which can still help us end the game. And then taking a quick look at the rest of our deck, we've got a lot of mana creatures. We're also playing Gilded Goose, even though we can't minus two Luka on it to get our end race forerunners, just to give us that extra acceleration to help us play our Planeswalkers on turn three. And we also have Leyline of Abundance, which can help us power out one of our Planeswalkers a turn ahead of schedule. And then at two mana, we've got Incubation Druid, which we can also adapt if we're lacking a mana sink and we don't have anything else to do, can turn into a three five. We've got the Leafkin Druid, which can double mana if we have four or more creatures in play, which can also come up. And then Paradise Druid, which can also fix our mana, making red and has that built-in hexproof for a turn at least. And then we also have some cheap interaction with Fire Prophecy, dealing three damage to target creature. And we can also put a card from our hand on the bottom of our library and then draw a card, which is very useful if we want to get rid of an Andres Forerunners that we maybe don't want to hard cast to put more copies into the deck so we can search them up with Luka. And also just gives us some cheap interaction if we're up against a more aggressive deck can be useful to just get ourselves a bit more time and maybe protect our Planeswalkers better. We could also replace Fire Prophecy with a number of other cards, Voracious Hydra, for example, we won't hit with the minus two on Luka, and it's still a nice mana sink that can act as removal. Could also be a nice inclusion, even though it's maybe a bit less mana efficient in early turns than a Fire Prophecy would be. We could even splash blue for Hydroid Crisis if we really wanted to. So there's a number of options we can consider here, but I've been liking Fire Prophecy a decent amount. Then of course we've got our Ley Line, which can also act as a mana sink for eight mana, putting a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control, which also synergizes with our Incubation Druid if it didn't have any counters on it already, as it will now make three mana instead of just one. And then at five mana, of course, we've got our two Planeswalkers, which are the two main win conditions alongside our end race forerunners, which we can also frequently hard cast thanks to our mana creatures and ley lines and Nissas. And then the mana base is pretty straightforward. Seven mountains, nine forests, four stomping ground and four temple of abandon to give us a bit of card selection, help us find the missing combo pieces. So the only new card from Ikoria here is uh, Luka and then Fire Prophecy, but that could also be replaced with something else if you wanted to. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play. Don't have our Luka Planeswalker, but we do have Nissa, which is not a bad uh, backup. And then we might be able to hard cast the Forerunners thanks to Leyline. Being on the play also definitely a big deal for a deck like this. And hopefully our Incubation Druid doesn't get removed right away. Well, I guess Paradise Druid makes that a little bit uh, more likely. Facing a white deck, a red-white. And a Flourishing Fox, alright, so a cycling deck. So can't play Nissa sadly since we're missing a third land, but we'll play some mana creatures. And then next turn I can maybe even hard cast the Forerunners or go... Probably not enough mana for Nyssa into Forerunners, but definitely pretty close to it. We'll take the damage. Let's see if they cycle some more. 
The Flourishing Fox could definitely get bigger than our Andreas Forerunners. So we might have to go wide in order to defeat the Fox. For now just do damage. And go for Bloods, taking out one Incubation Druid. Fair enough. So I can still play Nissa. Seems fine. And then, do we want to untap the forest? Because if we lose the forest, that's pretty bad. Might be better off uh, untapping the mountain here. The land for us. And get in for three. And I can jump with the Gilded Goose if needed. Our rescuer is going to start making some 1-1 one -one tokens. If they don't have another land, then the mountain can hold off the fox for now. Which seems to be the case. Alright, so how many creatures do I need to tap here? I play Forerunners, I get to attack with Goose and Paradise Druids, and then second main, I can still maybe tap some of my creatures. Is that the best I can do? Could also use Leyline. This seems better to me. Play an extra goose. And then next turn we should be able to get across the finish line. Our creatures do trample, so blocking the mountain doesn't really accomplish a whole lot. Can also make an extra food, but we can do that uh, in the opponent's turn as well. Alright, not sure how our opponent's gonna get out of this mess. I guess next turn my creatures are no longer trampling, so they can maybe chum block to survive. But then we can also ultimate Nissa soon. So... Can attack with uh, the Vigilant Lands and still tap them for mana to activate Ley Lines, so... This should be good enough. Putin gets an extra blocker. Alright, sweet, and that'll do it. No lookout this time, but uh, Nissa still good enough. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, a hand capable of playing a turn 3 Luka, so I'm keeping. Now I'm still missing a 2 mana creature to sacrifice with a minus. But we've got a lot of those in the deck. Facing a blue-white flyers deck. 
So they do definitely have the tools to attack my planeswalkers past my forerunners. So if I play Luca, yeah, I guess I'll just start plussing. So next turn we can play Incubation Druid minus get four runners. And then the Goose gets to attack as a 2-4 and stay back on defense. Hopefully no Empyrean Eagles. If they have uh, Rally of Wings, they could kill Luka as well. They do have Empyrean Eagle. You strike like a coward. Let's play Incubation Druids. And Incubation Druids. And next turn we can do it again. Opponent attacks. I'll take it. They might have a rally of wings here to untap their creatures, give them plus two plus two. Another Imperial Eagle second main is not gonna cut it. We almost drew all the foreigners here. Good thing we have one left in the deck. And that should be game. Sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. A reasonable hand. We've got ley line, bit of interaction, bit of ramp. We're missing a five mana planeswalker, but we've got eight of those that we could draw into. And we're not too far from potentially hard casting the forerunners if we draw another mana creature. Ominous seas. All right. Well, I don't think prophecy is great in this matchup, so drawing two of them uh, is not quite where I want to be. Voracious Hydra definitely would have been more useful. Alright, there's our turn 3 Nissa regardless. I think I want to plus on the forest since those are pretty valuable right now. Plus, we get to keep up Fire Prophecy for what it's worth. Fairy Vandal, yeah. It's a fine target for it. Do I get rid of Prophecy or Lands? I mean, I'm going to be able to cast the Foreigners most likely anyway. And maybe I'll want a second Prophecy. Probably don't need a third, but. That's okay. It's your opponent on a Jeskai deck. And a Valiant Rescuer, another fine target for the Prophecy. But I think we've got bigger fish to fry. So I guess I can attack and then before blocks, cast a Prophecy. Probably could have tapped my mana a little bit better there. In order to be attacking with the mountain instead of the paradise druids. But it shouldn't matter too much. Not sure what this implies. Maybe like a zenith flare would only be for one. They can't cycle enough to 
make a Kraken, so who knows. Should also be able to use the ley line here. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Oof, this hand is just missing a mana creature and then it would be perfect. Can I keep this? I have basically one draw step to find a mana creature. If I miss, it's, it's pretty bad. Opponent on a Giruda deck, so Fire Prophecy could maybe kill their mana creature. I think I'm gonna keep it. The payoff is pretty huge if we do get there. No mana creature, sadly. Let's see if we can put the prophecy to use. Nope, it's gonna be Haven. Alright, there's the druids. Turn late, but I'll take it. Next turn we get our end race forerunners and then hoping for more uh, two mana creatures essentially. Hopefully they don't hit my own uh, Forerunners with Giruda here. Ponon just completely bricked off. That works. So I could Prophecy, hoping to draw into a creature so I can get another Forerunners in play. But playing this is alright too. Just plus. Monsters are the key to defending monsters. Could attack and then prophecy Geruda if they block. Maybe that's worth it if they have like spark doubles in hand. And then next turn I can maybe play Druid minus and get another pig. Alright, they have a Giruda in hand. This time they did hit Spark Double. And another Spark Double. Uh oh. And just a mana creature. So play this. I guess I would rather sack the Leafkin than Incubation Druids. Can I use Leyline here too? Let's see. One, two. I guess I would rather just activate Leyline. So we'll put the 7-7 seven, seven firsts. Opponents at 2. 
keeping the game exciting. But we can get a third Forerunners next turn with the Leafkin Druids. Alright, add another Spark Double in hand. So... Opponent hits my Forerunners now. Uh-oh. But they chose for another Spark Double, and then they hit their own Forerunners. Wow. Opponent hit all four uh, Spark Doubles here. So they can only really attack with the 8 Giruda. Geruda. I should have another Forerunners left in the deck, I believe. Yeah, there's one more. So, might as well block. Thassa can flicker Spark Double, make another Giruda. Alright, still have my Forerunners in the deck. Opponent's got 17 cards remaining to my 15. And hits Gogla. Uh oh. Yeah, this is starting to slip away. I don't think getting another Forerunners is good enough here. So close. But yeah, hitting all the Spark Doubles with Giruda is one way to win. So I have one Forerunners left. Oh, do I even have a Forerunners left? One, two, three, four. I guess I don't. So minusing a Lucan doesn't accomplish much. All right, I think we're dead. What a turn of events. Can play some creatures, but... Yeah, even if I chum block and try to ultimate Nissa, it's probably not going to be enough. Can adapt the Incubation Druid too. But they can also just tap my creatures down with Thassa. Yeah, the Geruda deck, if it runs uh, well, can definitely be pretty hard to beat unless you've got some counter spells that are ready. We had an okay draw, didn't quite get the turn 3 Luka for Pig, so we were a bit slower than we would have liked. So I'm pretty sure that our opponent has. If not to kill, they can at least take out my Planeswalkers. And Dream Eater as well. Bounces Leaf Kindreds. Gets to take out Leyline. So, I guess I'll jump like this. Don't care too much about Luka. I mean, I get to have an indestructible forest. Does that matter? Probably not. Do I have any Nissas left in the deck I could draw? Should have one Nissa left in the deck. So maybe that's my game plan here. Ultimate Nissa. And then try to draw another Nissa, but yeah, I still don't really see how we deal those last two points. They can also fight the forests, so I don't have any indestructible uh, creatures. Takes out Incubation Druid instead. Alright. It's ultimate. The land bestows opportunity for those who are so we've got a Nissa left, and that's probably the only relevant draw.
opponent can just activate Thassa and attack with everyone, and that should be game. Alright, GG's. Ended up being a very close game. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And uh, our opening hand's a little awkward with three mountains and no green mana. Would I have kept this with green mana? Maybe. I mean, ley line, two mana creatures can hard cast the foreigners. Definitely not exciting. But now it's an easy mulligan, and this is an easy keep. Would have liked to keep the Fire Prophecy as a bit of interaction, but I think I gotta keep Double Druid, especially if one of them dies, to go with our ley line, help us power out Nissa, and then uh, Nissa will help us activate the ley line as well. Opponent with a Temple of Epiphany, could maybe be a Jeskai deck. I'm gonna need an untap land to play Nissa next turn, so the Temple comes at an awkward time. Alright, opponent had removal anyway, so good thing we kept the extra Incubation Druids. Didn't really need Fire Prophecy. Opponent could be on like a red-blue uh, cycling deck with a Riel, in which case Prophecy is still useful. But don't think I can afford to keep it here, especially if the Druid dies. So they are just blue reds. Alright, hopefully no counter spells here. Doesn't matter too much how I tap for Nissa. And next turn we can play our Forerunners if Nissa's still there. Could maybe see Brazen Borrower. Instead, Yudaro cycles. Shock takes out Incubation Druids. Ooh, there's Luka, but now I lost my two mana creature, so I can't minus to get a Forerunners anymore. I guess we'll just cast a pig. Gets disputed. One mana short of paying for it. That's all right. Storm's Wrath could be pretty effective here, killing my two lands and knocking some loyalty of Nissa. It's gonna be Ural instead. Takes out my forest. Can still play Luka. And then... Uh, I guess we'll start plussing. That's a miss. The plus on Luka is not amazing in this deck. It's definitely mostly for the minus that we're interested in it. Right, can ultimate Nissan next turn if we want to. Not sure how our opponent beats two indestructible 3-3 mountains, so I think I'm happy enough ultimating Nissa here. Alright, and our opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Turn three, Luca, hopefully into Andre's Foreigners. Could use an extra two mana creature so we can minus two twice in a row. No real point in playing the goose. I guess playing the goose would ensure that if they kill one of the two copies, I can still ramp into Luka, so I guess it wasn't completely useless to do so. And we did draw Incubation Druid, so... We've got the ideal start on the play. So I'll be surprised if her opponents can uh, get back into this game, but needs to start by removing the Forerunners and maybe killing Luca. Opponent on a Jeskai cycling deck. And her opponent just scoops it up. Yeah, I mean... Next turn, play Incubation Druid, minus again, get a second for our nurse, and that's game over. So yeah, essentially a turn 4 kill here. Alright, that's gonna be it for me today. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.